Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in the Loop. It is so amazing. If you are joining us online, I am looking at about 35 or so folks in here. It's for the first time, and oh, I cannot even remember. It's, it's amazing. So I just feel overwhelmed by this moment, and I'm so grateful to be able to welcome you to this liturgy here tonight, Holy Trinity Saturday, as well as my final liturgy here with HT Loop. So I'm so glad to share this moment with you. I just wanted to let everyone know that tonight is a communion Saturday. So if you're at home, uh, I encourage you to prepare uh, your elements if you have not done so already, uh, some festive drinks and uh, some staple foods at your home that you can share and participate in communion with us there. We also wanna let you know that you are welcome in this place. Whatever our skin color, whoever we are, whatever our religious or spiritual background or how we feel about church, Whatever our gender or sexual identities, God welcomes us here. And God's acceptance of us compels us to stand against racism, sexism, heterosexism, xenophobia, classism, ableism, ageism, and all forms of hate and prejudice. We hope that tonight, whether you're online or in person, is a time and a place where you are able to experience intimately the mystery of God. And so now I invite you to stand. I don't get often say that, but I invite you to stand for our gathering hymn. And we encourage you uh, to stay masked, but if you'd like to sing, you can sing uh, low under your mask. of our Lord Jesus Christ 
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of the Lord's robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above the Lord, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of the glory of the Lord. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the sovereign of the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for me? And I said, here I am, send me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Praise be to God. God.
A reading from Romans. Brothers, sisters, siblings, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with Christ, so that we may also be glorified with Christ. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jewish people. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the dominion of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can anyone enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the dominion of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to Jesus, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can, I, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world in this way, that God gave the Son, the only begotten one, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. It is so fitting that a church named Holy Trinity would teach me so much about mystery. After all, the Holy Trinity is one of the greatest mysteries of our faith. One God in three persons. Make it make sense. 
And so today, being Holy Trinity Saturday and my last liturgy here with Holy Trinity as your associate pastor, I think it's fitting then that we reflect a bit on our time together, as well as the mystery that we have been invited to experience and embrace in this place. So let me start by taking you back to the first season of Lent that I spent with Holy Trinity as a pastor in 2016. We read a book by Barbara Brown Taylor called Learning to Walk in the Dark. Little did I know that that book would become kind of a metaphor for my time at Holy Trinity. Now don't think for a second that I take for granted the risk that you took on me when you called me to be your pastor. I was only out of seminary for one year at that moment. I was unproven, I was idealistic, not to mention I had a hunger for justice and a penchant for getting arrested at protests. <laughs> Yet you put your trust and your confidence in me. And even when I stumbled and tripped and fell, you picked me back up and put me back on my feet. I was, and in many ways still am, learning to walk in the dark. But thankfully, this is a community, a community where we are not afraid of the dark. You know that God's mystery is experienced in the unlikeliest and darkest of places. You don't shy away from those places. And that's maybe because you trust, as Barbara Brown Taylor writes in her book, that new life starts in the dark. Whether it's a seed in the ground, a baby in the womb, or Jesus in the tomb, it starts in the dark. Growing up, I was told that nothing good happens after dark. <laughs> but maybe it's exactly the opposite. Maybe that's where the best stuff happens, if we're brave enough to venture into the dark. And in our gospel reading today, we have a scene that takes place because Nicodemus does just that. He ventures into the dark. Now, his reason for going out under the cover of darkness was probably because he didn't want to be seen by his fellow Pharisees with Jesus. But either way, Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the dark. And what Jesus reveals to him is mystifying. Jesus tells Nicodemus that no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. To which Nicodemus is understandably confused and says to Jesus, how can anyone be born again after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus goes on to answer him very confusingly, saying, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished by what I said to you. You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born to the Spirit. One of the things that I love most about this utterly confusing interaction is Nicodemus's question. It's a very earnest one. He says, can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And I felt that when he said that. I mean, when I'm reading the news and I get overwhelmed by everything and going on in our world, I sometimes think to myself, well, how nice it might be to just crawl back up into my mother's womb where it was safe. But then again, I have to think and stop and ask myself, is my mother's womb even as safe as I imagined it was? Tara and I are two months away, almost exactly, from our baby's due date. And let me tell you, nothing about it feels safe. <laughs> We anxiously question everything that's happening with the pregnancy. We even had a scare recently because Tara had eaten some bean sprouts that came in her pad top. Little did we know that bean sprouts can sometimes carry a wisteria, but that's what happened. And it's, this is us, you know, worrying about these things in the 21st century with access to Google and you Chicago doctors. Can you imagine what birth was like in the first century, how risky it must have been? And yet, that's the metaphor that Jesus uses with Nicodemus. And Jesus uses this metaphor to convey what it's like to enter the kingdom of God. So in other words, he's saying that only through vulnerable, mysterious, risky, 
miracle of birth can we enter the kingdom of God. And this isn't just about passively being born. Jesus is troubling our idea of being born again by inviting us into this act of labor, which by its very nature is risk. So to enter the kingdom of God through the act of labor, in the first century where the majority of women were dying during labor, that means that entering the kingdom of God requires trust in our most vulnerable moments and a willingness to risk in order to experience the miracle of life in all of its fullness. That's a tall order to ask. And especially with all that's happening in the world around us, we also might desire to just crawl back in our mother's wombs and stay there until everything changes. But there is a new world waiting for us just beyond the darkness. If we just breathe and push and labor it into being just as God has labored us into being. Valerie Kaur, a Sikh activist and lawyer, she gave a speech during a watch night service at the Metropolitan AME Church on December 31st, 2016. She said it beautifully. She said, yes, the future is dark. So the mother in me asks, what if? What if this darkness is not the darkness of the tomb, but the darkness of the womb? What if our America is not dead, but a country that is waiting to be born? What if the American story is one long labor? What if all our grandfathers and grandmothers are standing behind us now, those who survived occupation and genocide, slavery and Jim Crow, detentions and political assault? What if they are whispering in our ears, you are brave? What if this is our nation's greatest transition? What does the midwife tell us to do? Read and then push. Because if we do not push, we will die. If we do not push, our nation will die. Tonight, we will breathe. Tomorrow, we will labor in love, through love. And your revolutionary love is the magic we will show our children. Powerful, powerful stuff from Valerie Power. And I hope she's right. I hope she's right that America is not in the darkness of our tomb, but rather the darkness of the womb. But even recognizing that we are in the dark is a difficult confession to make in its own way, let alone believing that the present darkness surrounding us is not the end, but rather just the beginning. But that is the kind of honest hope that we need right now, the kind of honest hope that will give us the ability to put one foot in front of the other and begin learning to walk in the dark. Each step will bring mystery and risk and vulnerability, and no doubt we will even stumble, trip, and fall. But we can trust that the God who so loved the world will pick us back up again and put us back on our feet. That same God who created you and who is calling you is saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Even in the dark, when we cannot see, we can still hear God's voice calling to us and we can answer, here I am, send me. I was talking with a, a friend of mine whose child just turned one. And her child is already walking and has been doing so for some time. And I told her how amazed I was at all of this, that her child was able to do such amazing walking all around campus. And she said to me, the key is to let them walk without you know, holding their hands like we sometimes do with kids. She said, sure, they're going to fall more. But with each fall, they build more of those stabilizer muscles in their core and in their feet and in their legs. Before you know it, they're even more balanced than if we were to help them. And in a mysterious way, I think this resonates with my own experience here at Holy Trinity. You have given me so much freedom to try and to fail and to walk and to fall. Because of all that freedom that I've experienced here, it has made me a more balanced pastor. We often say that Holy Trinity is a teaching parish as we have supervised countless ministry and context seminarians and interns, myself included in that list. 
but maybe given the way that we teach with such freedom and such mystery, we're not just a teaching parish, but we're a learning parish. Like we know we can't just take everyone's hand and lead them to where they're going because we are all in the dark here. So instead, we just invite everyone to learn with us as we walk together in this darkness, picking each other up along the way when any of us stumble, trip, or fall. The Holy Trinity is mysterious, and this place will always be synonymous with mystery to me. It's precisely because of this mystery and our openness to it that we can hold the tension and be bold to learn about and dismantle things like racism, even when it implicates us. We can be bold to provide a space for our confirmation students and our Life Together confirmants to doubt and to ask big questions and not to appease them with easy answers or cliches. We can be bold in this mystery to be co-creators with God as we labor together to birth the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And whether we are near or far, we can be bold together to risk another step, putting one foot in front of the other as we vulnerably but bravely learn to walk in the dark. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe, we believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look, look for the resurrection, resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray, O God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for peace in the Middle East. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health conditions. We remember especially those we name aloud or in the chat feature. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we pray for Pastor Ben Adams as he leaves this community and begins a new campus ministry in the Detroit area. With gratitude for the many gifts shared with us, bless him and all that is to come. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for this worshiping community, for HT Loop, HT Lakeview, Grace Place, and the Lakeview Lutheran Parish, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. We rejoice with Carol and Rob Schickel, who celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary this weekend. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for those who have died in the faith. Blessed Mary, Justin, the martyrs of Uganda, and John the 23rd. We remember also those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abiding grace, in the strong name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. online or in person, I invite you to share the peace with one another, however you feel comfortable, whether it's a bow, a handshake, even a hug, if you feel comfortable with that. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace. Thank you. 
Wow, that is something I have not shared just like that with before in a very long time, especially in this book. So, so wonderful to be able to do that again. I don't have very many announcements for you tonight. Uh, just another word of welcome to everybody who's with us. Uh, we will be doing communion tonight. So uh, the way that will work is that we will, uh, I'll have the bread right here in the middle. And so everybody can just kind of make their way. Uh, we'll go uh, front rows to back rows. So you can start in the front and then make your way back to your seats in the next row from there in order from that. So that's really the only instructions I have for you. It's only bread tonight for communion, but we believe in uh, fully valid and complete communion in one kind. So no worries, you're getting the full communion even though it's in one kind tonight. So. I just want to say thank you. I know that there's going to be more opportunities to say thanks, but I just want to make sure I say it here as well in case anybody has to scoot out after worship. Thank you for being such a supportive, graceful, loving community to me as a first call pastor. I, I, you, you were the community that made me a pastor, right? Like this is the place where I was ordained and where I was installed. Um, and so that will forever hold such a special place in my heart uh, wherever I go from here. And I uh, will definitely carry with me Holy Trinity uh, to Detroit and to do that. So thank you so much for everything. I, I can't say it enough. But we are going to continue now. I'm going to invite Michelle up. We actually have a graduation blessing. So. Yes, indeed. So we're going to switch gears here a little bit. I'm going to invite Amanda Finale to come up with her parents as well. And um, so many, this is a familiar face to many of you. Amanda has been a member of this congregation um, first at Lakeview when that was the only thing that existed when she was in her mother's womb <laughs> at the same time that my son was in my womb and we belly bumped and we've been um, watching Amanda grow um, for all these years. And we're delighted she's a graduate, will be a graduate um, on the 20th. 13, whenever, <laughs> of Jones College Prep, which is right next door, and so that's a familiar place, And uh, but she's going to Ohio State University, and uh, Ohio State. Ohio State. The Ohio State. oh sorry, the Ohio State University, okay, thank you, I'm learning, 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 always learning in this place, um, and so uh, we want to send you off with a blessing, I know that the day that we're doing this with um, the other graduates is the day that you're graduating, um, over at Soldier Field. And so we wanted to make sure that she was able to do this uh, ritual and prayer with this community because this place right here in the HT Loop has really become her family's community as they live closer to this place and you all have really embraced her. So let the tears start flowing. I tell you, Amanda, this is um, from the first. <laughs> well, no, first, but then. Oh, I do have a gift. <laughs> I, can, I can interrupt this for a moment. Uh, this is just a, a small token of my. Congrats to you, but it's a, a book that is all about uh, belovedness, and it's a guide to life on campus and continuing to find God in yourself and others. And so I actually wrote the chapter on partying, so <laughs> very interesting. to be a college companion for you to go. Amanda, can oh, you come have... this way? Yeah, so I'm going to wrap this around. This is Herschel in the, uh, the color of the Ohio State University. And so um, the Pershaw, we have a Pershaw ministry here at Holy Trinity uh, for people, not only when they're sick, but when they're moving into transitions or having babies or whatever, they, not babies yet, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> this transition will hold you right now as you transition into the Ohio State University. <laughs> May you use this prayer, prayer shawl um, for times of prayer, but also for times of discomfort and to feel the embrace of your community when you sit in this and you need um, some little warm or something to pray in or just something to cuddle with. So let's um, we'll put our hands, use the face this way. You all can put your hands on her. Let us pray. And you all, no, wait, you all put your hands on her. <laughs> God of creation, pour out your spirit on Amanda as she enters a new period of life and faith. Give her courage in times of trial. Keep her safe from all harm. Guide her in your peace. Be with Amanda as she begins new ventures, knowing that you have blessed her with hope and joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. You cut. <laughs> <laughs>
up to come up. She, Erica is our council president for um, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, so please come up. Erica has a few words to say for Ben. Thank you. That's a hard act to follow, but <laughs> um, I don't have too much to say other than thank you. Um, thank you on behalf of the entire congregation, but also on behalf of Chris and I. You're why we're here. Um, I actually think you had to reschedule one of our premarital counseling sessions. There was some concern you might be arrested at a protest that day. And, and I, I told my mom, and she said, wow, you go to the coolest church. So it's a, it's a plus for some of us. So, um, But on behalf of the entire congregation, um, you know, the outpouring of love and generosity, um, we'll be presenting the gift from the entire congregation at tomorrow's service. Um, but this community specifically here at the Loop, I think, um, it's, it's home for so many of us, and you've been such a big part of that. And so we wanted to present you, and you have to come up and okay. with this gift. Um, and I hope that every time you use it, you will think of us and think right. of this place. And, um, so I have to open this. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> a meditation bowl. All right. Amazing. Beautiful. Thank you so thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Oh it's gonna have the same tone, it'll bring me right back. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think we continue now with the setting of the table.
So with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh, 
trusting in God who nourishes and sustains us. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you are at home with one or more others, please wait a moment to commune one another. If you are gathered by yourself, know that you are part of a community gathered this day. Please take a piece of bread, the body of Christ given for you. And now a sip of wine, the blood of Christ shed for you. If you are not communing today, please receive this blessing. May the triune God bless you with grace and peace. May you sense Christ's presence at the table in your home and in all your meals. And may Christ open your eyes to see him revealed in all people created in the divine image. Amen. Amen. If you are gathered with one or more others, Please serve one another at this time with the words, the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may we who have received this Eucharist worship you as all we do and proclaim the glory of your majesty. We ask this through Christ our Lord. First, we have some remarks from Pastor Mueller that he'd like me to read. He says, I regret not being in person on this important day, though I am joining you on Zoom and YouTube this weekend. Before receiving Ben's resignation, I had made travel plans that coordinated with the construction in the church office area in Lakeview. In the past six years, Ben has shared many gifts with this community, and he now leaves a hole in our hearts. Yet we rejoice in his new campus ministry call and the excitement that he and Tara share as they anticipate the birth of their first child. He has lovingly shepherded the HT Loop community, providing warm hospitality and pastoral care. His work with the homeless community inspired us and his passion for racial justice, both challenged and involved in Holy Trinity's anti-racism ministry. Ben faithfully preached the gospel with words of discomfort as well as words of hope. His genuine, open, and caring spirit grounded all of his words and actions. And I can't resist adding that we will miss your changing hairstyles. <laughs> Send Adams on. March 8th, 2015, we as Holy Trinity Lutheran Church called you to be an associate pastor in this place, to proclaim God's word, to baptize and teach, to announce God's forgiveness, and to preside at the Lord's table. With the gospel, you have comforted us in times. <laughs> Sickness and trouble. Sharing our joys and sorrows, you have been important to our life together in the Church of Jesus Christ, in our service to this community, and in God's mission to the whole world. As we leave this community of faith, we say farewell and we pray for God's peace. People of God, members of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, do you release Ben from service as your pastor? We do, and we give thanks to God for our ministry together. Ben, do you recognize and accept the completion of your ministry with Holy Trinity Lutheran Church? We do, and I give thanks to God for our ministry. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. You equip your people with abilities that differ according to the grace given to them, and you call them to various avenues of service. We give you thanks for the ministry of Ben among the people of God in this place. You watch over our going out and our coming in. Bless this time of ending and beginning. You surround your people in every time and place. Keep us close in your love. You accompany your people in times of joy and times of trial. Prosper all that has been done to your glory in this time together. Heal and forgive all that has fallen short of your will for us. Help Ben and Tara and all of us to live with courage and gladness in the future you give to us. As Ben has been a blessing to us, so now send Ben forth to be a blessing to others. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand for this final blessing. This is the Franciscan blessing that I've really adopted as the campus ministry blessing we use in almost every situation at the end of any event. So I offer that to you now. May God bless you with discomfort and easy answers, half truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your hearts. May God bless you with anger and injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, hunger, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children in the poor.